Hey, and welcome back. I'm here with the amazing Melissa Maker from Clean My Space because I recently did a podcast and Melissa schooled me that I've been cleaning wrong and my whole life is a lie. Your whole life is a lie? Just the cleaning part. Did I tell you that? I'm here, she's here to set the record straight and literally dish the dirt on how to really get rid of the dirt. That was kind of, that was a That was good, dirt. that was poetic. That was poetic. So Melissa's gonna share with us the top 10 huge cleaning mistakes, starting with the one I've been telling you to do for the past 15 years, this thing. Do you see how nasty this is? Yeah, I was gonna say, why did you bring your used duster to my house? Like I don't need your dust implanting itself yeah. in my house. Listen, because this is the only one I have because they're expensive and I keep buying refills. This, you guys know, I talk about the Swiffer duster all the time and how much I love it because it has an extending wand. And when I talked about this with you, you shamed me. Well, oh my God, I did not shame it you. It was shame, she was really oh. shameful. No, she was nice. Sorry. But why, why does this suck so hard? Okay, so just like feel the quality of this. Has it ever broken on you? Have you ever had this, to replace I've had, it? I've had multiples, okay. but I do use it a lot. Fair, no problem. You have to buy replacements for these all the time. I do, because look, it's gross. Okay, so these products are designed to be disposable. They're designed to be replaced. Of course, this is what's called in marketing the razor and blade method. They will sell you the razor so that they can keep selling you a new blade all the time. And it's sort of like an annuity business model, if you will. So just think about that, okay? But when we have this sort of flimsy product, and I mean, I love Procter & Gamble, but I'm- I see dust flying. No, I see Cass, as she no, shakes more it. More cleaning for me to do later, <laughs> boo. I love Procter & Gamble, but you know, I'm just not a fan of this product. So um, a, a reason I don't like it is because you have to spend so much money on maintaining this product that really you should only have to buy once. Um, and second of all, I'm a big you know person against waste and disposable products. So that's why I would not recommend this. If you wanted a good quality solution, something that you can do is you can take a good quality mop pole that you have. If you like extendable things, do, you can take- That's why I like it, because it's extendable. Right, so I could so, do ceilings and cobwebs. Yeah, so if you have a, a really great quality mop pole that you like, you can make what I call a ghost. You're, you're somewhat crafty. I am not crafty at all, but let me tell you, a microfiber cloth and a hair elastic, look at me, put this on Pinterest. This is what I call the dusting ghost. So you can then use your oh, extendable like, pole. Exactly, I get it. I get it. exactly. I'm it. And then you can sort of raise it up and you can do your high dust. You can even go higher because you're actually using a real like pole. Like That's a right, pole. like a, okay. yeah, an extendable mop okay. pole. And it's, it's cheaper. Yeah, okay. it is cheaper because okay. you're buying this once, you can wash it hundreds of times. Then you can even do that with like a, a flat or a taco shaped mop with a microfiber pad. Okay. You no, know, I might or may not know about so one mistake. Of those. And I did know this was a mistake yeah. because this is just spreading dust. I look so freaking cute. With this it. is Lumiere's girlfriend, and that's where it should stop and start. <laughs> this technology made a lot of sense in the year so 1600. I it is an apron. I just live my best life. I don't want to know about what you and Joe do in your apron with your duster. Unfortunately, but, there's none of that. Okay. But truthfully, this is, it's just shaky it and is. it can't hold on to dust. Also, there really, I mean, there is a way to sort of clean these, but who is ever okay. doing that? Okay. We hate, we hate this. We hate this. And we hate this. So this is the mistake. This is the mistake. The correction is to buy a good quality cleaning tool. Like whether a it's microfiber. a microfiber cloth, a microfiber mop with But pads. this, I feel like traps. Does microfiber trap it the dirt? It is, yeah. Micro, microfiber has that electrostatic charge that sort of, you know, sucks dirt right to it. It's going. I'm, I'm ghosting Yeah, throw instead. it right on my couch. I'm... <laughs> Fine. Biggest mistake number one. Let me know in the comments below if you're making it. Let's jump to mistake number two. I did know this one, okay? Because every time I wanted to clean in the past, the first thing I would do is go to the store mm -hmm. and buy new cleaning products. Mm -hmm. Like that was somehow going to solve the problem? Yes. Yes, of course it would. Just like the time I bought the rowing machine and now it's going to solve the problem of me not <laughs> feeling like I was in shape and it's collecting dust downstairs. Yeah. Or like we have to get organized. So we buy a bunch of bins and now we just have bins on top of our mess. So you have to organize double the amount of stuff? Yeah. So we don't throw plastic at our clutter and we don't throw cleaning supplies at our dirt. Yeah. You can actually throw really simple things at your dirt. So you know that I love DIY cleaning products made with dish soap, baking soda, vinegar, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, a little bit of cornstarch. You know, you kind of whip all that stuff up together. You put it into spray bottles. You label them. You 
know about labeling. I, I do. And I like a homemade cleaner too, because I feel almost like I'm crafting and then I'm excited to use the concoction I made, but I'm also very lazy. Yeah. High five for being lazy. Like also very lazy right here. So I like having like one product that I love that I kind of can use on every surface. Yeah. So for me, that's dish soap and water. Straight up, a couple drops of dish soap. If you use too much dish soap, cast. you actually have to rinse the surface. Right. And I like a no rinse product because lazy girls, we don't want to rinse anything. And you're going to save money. I can't tell you how many times I've honestly decluttered people's homes and the messiest homes have the most cleaning supplies. That's so interesting to me. I've never done the decluttering, but I love that insight. Have you ever tallied up? Like, I should, but it's like, it's like under every sink. I've, it's like $472 and then like, but I also have an entire closet dedicated to cleaning supplies. Let me move the stuff out of the way so I can open the closet or, or buying multiple vacuums and mops and gadgets yes. and all of this stuff, but never actually using it. Using and it. I, I think like, I think almost it's sort of like clutter. When you have too many cleaning supplies, you're overwhelmed and you don't know what to pick. So then you just are like, I don't know which cleaning product's the best. So then you don't clean. Yeah. It's like going to a restaurant and getting a slimmer menu, right? And then you can just pick your things so much easier. It's kind of the same with cleaning. And you know, I love that you said that. It's just so much easier to go to it. You know, you load up your caddy with whatever you need or your virtual caddy. If you're not bringing one with you, you can load up your belt loops if you want. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can just go with one or two products. One microfiber cloth. And do your business. I love that. So stop going to the store to buy a bunch of cleaning supplies. Okay, Cass, the next mistake is how people clean their hardwood and their laminate floors. They're buying steam mops and they're using far too much liquid when they clean their floors. Yeah. Water's supposed to be bad, right? Yeah, like a little bit of water. I always call it a sneeze. So on hardwood floor, you can use like a sneeze amount <laughs> of moisture on the floor and then use a microfiber flathead mop. That's sufficient unless there's a spill on the floor or grease or oil or anything like that. You're going to have to work a little bit harder, but you can spot treat that stuff. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you should just do like a fine mist yes. and then you can do a nice, you know, S pattern with your dry mop, your dry mop. And I do love my spray mop, but I, I used to have a steamer and I had like, you know, vinyl planks in the yeah. basement yeah, yeah. and it kind of warped the glue and they all started lifting and then I have laminate floors and the edges started bubbling. And I know people who've ruined their hardwood floors too. They're dull now. They're yeah. using too much water. So I want to tell you something. I asked this question to Armstrong, which is a flooring manufacturer company who actually provided the floors we have in this house when we were doing our dream home reno series. And they said to me, because I said, okay, why is everyone so obsessed with steam mops? What's the deal? And can I use them on your floor? And they're like, people are obsessed with them because it's exactly like your, your earlier point about gadget, you know, just buying the thing to solve the problem. But they said, it behooves the manufacturer of those tools to sell them and tell you they do a great job, but they're not the people who are manufacturing the floor. So you have competing needs here, right? You've got the floor manufacturers who want you to use their products and take great care of the floors in the way that they determine you should. And then you have the people who want to sell you the steam mops and they're going to tell you it's perfectly safe, it's not, but it's not. It's not. Steam mops ruin floors. Maybe uh, if so you have we, tile, fine. But if tile you have is anything fine. other than tile, do not use a steam yeah. mop. If you have hardwood or laminate, really the best bet is a flathead slash taco shaped microfiber mop, um, like, you know, maker's mop or like Libman has mops or whoever yeah. you prefer. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, you know, I love mine. I should buy a maker's mop. <laughs> Bad. Unless I'm shamed over here. But, but, but no, yeah, that's fine. for sure. It's, it's hands down the best way to clean the floor. Yeah. Okay. So let me know if you're doing old school bucket and mop. Or if you're using a steamer, ooh, that's really bad. So the big mistake number four is using really abrasive cleaners on like tubs and tiles and toilet seats. Oh, okay. I got to hear about the toilet seat, but you're right. Abrasive products, huge mistake. So I always say start low and then level up your cleaning product and tool. So again, I always start with the dish soap and the water. In the case of the toilet, I will use something a little more powerful. Right. Um, but that said, I always test and I always recommend that you test your product on a hidden area first, just to make sure that you don't have any damage. And the second you notice damage, stop and find an alternative. So if you have like a fiberglass tub or something along those lines, 
you want to make sure that the product that you're using says it's safe to use on that surface specifically. Let's talk about your toilet seat. What happened? Yeah. So I sprayed it with a bleach spray and I walked away, which is fine for some things, but a plastic toilet seat, it actually ate yeah. away at the toilet seat. So now it looks yeah. stained all like stains are, it looks nasty. Yeah. I was trying to clean it, but now it looks gross. And, and I've heard this so many times. People are like, my toilet seat looks so bad. Mm -hmm. It's actually because you're using abrasive cleaners, which yeah. is eating away at the plastic. So abrasive and then bleach would be corrosive. So gross. Yeah. Those are the two things that are going on there. Either you're using something abrasive or corrosive, but toilet seats are one of those funny things where you, you have to actually use quite a gentle product on them to get them clean. And unless you have heavy duty buildup on the toilet, you know, you probably need nothing more than just a simple disinfecting bathroom right. cleaner. Yeah. Right. And I don't use bleach in the house, so that's just me. We can talk about that. It's okay. Yeah. Can I'm that, not be, a, shame you can about that, that? be mistake number five? I always thought my mom is like old school, like bleach everything and like use Windex on things. Here's what you don't do. Don't mix bleach yeah. and ammonia. Don't mix bleach with anything. <laughs> like you can mix it with water if you're using it, but bleach is bleach does not play well with others. It doesn't. My cousin Tanya, if you're watching this, I'm going to throw you under the bus. She closed her bathroom door. She bleached everything. She used Windex. She had a hard time oh. breathing. Do you know what makes chlorine gas? Like, yes, what? I do. Too. No, I do know like, that. No, I do know that. Sorry, Tanya. Oh so it's gosh, like Tanya. Dumb ways to die. So many dumb ways to die. Don't mix Windex and bleach or any ammonia, any glass cleaner and bleach. Yeah. Just Vinegar like, too. Really? Yeah. Vinegar too. Yeah. yeah. So um, there are plenty of stories. You can probably go on the poison control website and you know read all about them, but there are lots of scary things that can happen with bleach. That's one of the reasons why we stay away from it in the house. Stay away. No, yeah. right. We mm -hmm. don't have to do it. Just because my mom did it doesn't mean I have to bleach everything. Yeah. Good my point. house smells like a pool. Why am I doing that? Well, it does bring on summer vibes, but just because <laughs> just because our parents cleaned a certain way or with a certain product or certain detergent or certain whatever, doesn't mean that that's the best thing for us now. Technology has changed. Right, Lumiere? <laughs> She's making fun of my duster over there. You're right, I'm giving up the bleach, fine. I'm giving up the bleach. It's a bad mistake. Let me know if you're also feeling inspired to give up the bleach in the comments below. One of the first things I learned when I started cleaning professionally, which sounds crazy because you know me, like... Your house is spotless. Okay. It's but, spotless. I, one of the first... I knew nothing about cleaning. And one of the first things that I learned was that you had to clean from the top to the bottom. Because the way I used to clean, and this is the mistake, is that I would clean here, and then I would notice something there, and then I would see something there, and then there'd be a shiny thing in the corner. And then I would just be like, da, 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 wasting my time mm -hmm. all over the place. And stuff from up here would fall down and then I'd have to re-clean a surface and it's just wasting time. I learned this from you because I used to like, oh, the floor's dirty. I have to vacuum. And then I'd vacuum and then I'd be like, oh, I should dust while I'm at it. And now I yeah. have to re-vacuum. And now I'm ruthless. Like I'm a monster. When I'm cleaning, I throw things on the floor because I know that I'm just going to vacuum the floor after. So it doesn't matter. And it kind of, it like gives you the safety. You're right. The floor is like it's last. And you yeah. know, I, you're right. Every cleaning professional does that for a reason. So why are we not following that top to bottom? Yeah. I always say the snow falls from the top to the bottom. So, so does dust. So does everything else. So just work with gravity. Don't work against it, honey. So don't vacuum first, vacuum last. And then mopping obviously after vacuuming. This next one, this mm -hmm. big mistake, I feel bad because I know my mother does this and she always taught me to do this. And so I feel bad saying it, but she always told me to dust my furniture with pledge okay. or like a, a polish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we talk about this? Yeah. This is a mistake. So again, I wanted to share that there's been a lot of advances in cleaning technology and also our furniture has changed, the finishes, the materials, all of that has changed. So we have to rejig the way that we clean things and the products and tools that we use. In my personal opinion, and I would love to know what the Clutterbug audience thinks about this, I just think furniture polish is something that we can gladly skip by in the cleaning aisle and just never touch again. It smells nice. But you know, maybe because I have cheap furniture, but I find like it's streaky okay. and then it shows fingerprints and then I can just never 
It's like a, I just dusted this for it's a one never-ending hour. story. It, yeah. Yeah. And okay. For some reason, like a multi-purpose cleaner, it's just it's over and it's nice, and I don't have to. Why? Yeah. Why? Okay. So I'll tell you why. So furniture polish is designed for wood. For wood. Oh. If it's solid wood varnished furniture with a high polish finish, you can use furniture polish. So it's got a very specific um, target type of furniture, if you will. So I'm looking around my room here and there like there are pretty much no surfaces that I would be using it on in here. Like my table is yeah. wood, but I think the finish that's on top is like a plastic. I don't know. So like then, for yeah. some reason I'm like it it is solid so wood. Let's talk but about it's what, like why isn't it working? So let's talk about what furniture polish is. Okay. It's like a mixture of silicone, oil, that kind of thing. So you're spraying it on and it is street it's streaky. It's, it's leaving so an un, an uneven finish. That's what you're getting, right? And then what happens is you build it up layer over layer over layer. So you get this unevenness. It leads to patchiness. It's not absorbing either. So you touch it. Now you got yeah. fingerprints. So in my opinion, you don't use it. What I do instead, I use a microfiber cloth, a little bit of that dish soap and water. And that is how I polish all of my wood and all of my furniture. And it looks beautiful. And you know what? If the furniture needs to be revived or rejuvenated, that's when I would go out and buy like a proper you know, like wood, an oil based, yeah, like, like a nourisher. Yeah. Like Is that the right something. Word? Well, yeah. I, you know, like for my cutting board, for example, I have like a special cutting board right. oil. So if my table needed that, which it doesn't, I would use something like that. Not a furniture. But polish. we're not pledging. It has to go. It has yeah. to just die. Let it's it not die. Just pledge. It's the whole category. Like whole furniture category. polish. Goodbye. Big mistake. Cass, one of the mistakes that I see people make is they get out the roll of paper towel to clean things that they could be cleaning with a proper cleaning cloth, like a microfiber cloth. Case in point, windows and mirrors and paper towel. Yeah. I, try, I, I, I don't use paper towel a lot, but when I do, I don't know why I grab it. It's because we think we have to. Well, paper towel is so convenient. I mean, it's, it's in a roll. It's, it's on your counter. It's grabbable. It's specifically designed to be easy to use. But it does leave fluffs everywhere. It does. And it does make streaks. It does. And the thing is, it's designed to be, again, a one and done product. So when we think about like the intent of the product or the tool rather that we're using, mm -hmm. you know, a flat weave microfiber cloth that is specifically designed to clean a mirror and leave a streak free finish. So it doesn't leave lint. It's a non-linting cloth. It doesn't leave streaks behind. It can lift up the dirt. It is purpose built for that job. Yeah. And I guess Paper towels are purposely to absorb, so you're just absorbing the cleaning. That's all they're doing. You're just and absorbing, and then there's nothing left to actually clean. That's right. And the material that they're made out of is by nature like pulpy. It's linty and yeah, pulpy. so it leaves lint behind. So we're just wasting product and making and it money. Look worse. Hello, and money. recession. And it's bad for the environment. <laughs> and it is. It is bad for the environment. We use paper towel in the house, but we use it sparingly. Right. Okay. So microfiber, microfiber, everything is, this is what you're saying, but a different kind. So like a flat weave for mirror and glass mm -hmm. and like the soft one for dusting because it electro traps it. Yeah. Electro trap. I'm going to, I'm going to coin this, that word. I, I don't know. Yeah. I think, you know what? It makes sense. I get it. You get it. We all get it. I didn't know this till you said it, but I love that it sucks it. <laughs> it's I, got an I imagine it's like a, charge. like a superhero, yeah, like a it's superhero. Like a exactly. Or like, like a Magneto. big vacuum. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Magneto cloth. Paper towels? Nope. Microfiber? Yes. When I professionally cleaned people's homes, I would always see the toilet bowl brush sitting in like a little soupy toilet bowl brush holder. And that liquid that builds up, I mean, we know what's living in the liquid, but the other thing is it also can lead to odors and it's just generally unattractive. Unless you're in a fight with someone and then you just kind of... Why Fling is mine pink? Liquid at them? Why, why is it pink? Because oh, okay. it's like, it looks like it should be pretty, but it's not. So yeah. my toilet brush has like some goo water and then it's pink. Okay. Okay. I'm going to tell you about the pink. I'm going to tell you about the pink. Is it bad? Because I don't want to know. Every toilet brush is pink in my house. It is. It's bad. Okay. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Okay. So the trouble is not allowing your toilet bowl brush to drip dry. Anything in the bathroom that is left wet is going to grow. Is that what this pink it's, is? It's, no, no, no. Is it's it actually, bacteria? It's actually a bacteria. So the pinky orangey stuff in your bathroom is a bacteria that thrives in warm, damp environments, just like your bathroom. Yeah. And once it's there, it's impossible to get rid of. So you have to continue to clean. You have to continue to dehumidify the space. 
Um, so we can talk about that. But yeah, in your bathroom, letting that toilet bowl brush drip dry okay. is just the easiest thing to do. You swish your toilet, you clean it, and then you just I've flip seen the brush you do under it. the lid. I've seen you do it so many yeah, times in your videos. Like, and I'm just like, lazy. And I throw it back in the pink festering bacteria yeah. pit that is the holder. Yeah, I know. Why am I doing that? I don't know. Why am I doing I don't that? Know, Cass. I wish I could explain it to you. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Okay. Okay. So the pink stuff. So the pink stuff is harmless. Okay. I mean, don't not, like don't dip lick your it. hand. Don't yeah. lick it. Don't do that. I'm not saying that. Okay. But what I am saying is it's not going to kill you okay. if it's just in your presence, but it's easy to get rid of. So what you want to do to keep it at bay is to ventilate. So turn on your fan during showers, at least 30 minutes after showers or open your windows, whatever you have to do. Hang your towels to dry, drip dry your toilet brush, drip dry your toilet brush, squeegee your shower, like just do everything you can to get the moisture out as quickly as possible. Because you're saying like the pink stuff is hard to get rid of. The pink, the pink stuff is hard to get rid of. It's cleanable, okay, but it'll just come back as soon as it feels like it's in a little tropical destination. I mean, it's pretty, but it's got to go. Yeah, it's not pretty and it does have to go. <laughs> Just because it's pink doesn't mean it's pretty. I really like pink, <laughs> Melissa, but not the pink bacteria growing in my bathroom. Got it. Okay, so the very last cleaning mistake. I feel like I've learned not to do this from you, but I see this on TikTok and like variations of it. What? is happening why are they putting an entire thing of fabuloso and then a whole thing of shaving cream and then baking soda and then flushing it down the toilet and we've already talked about the poison control issues right so i don't know people are doing it to get views cast listen we're both in the social media business we understand when times get desperate people do crazy things and toilets are gross but i think like flushing seven dollars worth of cleaners a waste seven that's like 25 but no it's absolutely unnecessary that's the mistake, okay? It's unnecessary to overuse product and it's unnecessary and wrong, quite frankly, to put product on a surface and wipe it off right away. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I've learned this from you. We don't just spray and wipe, like spray and wipe. We let the product do the work. Yeah, because we are lazy. Yeah, okay. So when you use too much product, you're wasting money and you actually have to work harder. Let me explain. If I put three times the amount of baking soda in my sink to scrub it uh, clean, then I have to spend more time rinsing, rinsing it, right? And then baking soda kind of leaves that fine powder. It really does. If I use too much, let's say dish soap to clean my floor. Well, now my floor is sticky. So then right. I have to do more work and clean my floor to get rid of the stickiness. That's why the Goldilocks amount of product is always what you should be following or a tested recipe by someone who you know and trust who might be wearing a green and white swirly shirt. I don't know. The other thing I would say about putting your product on a surface is when you apply it to a surface, you want to let it sit and do its work. Like we said, we're lazy. But not bleach. But not, of course not bleach. Don't we do don't that. use bleach in this house. But what you would do, you would put the product on, whatever kind of product it is, aside from something like a bleach, and this is of course after you've read the package, right? You want to let the product sit the liquid in the product is going to start breaking down whatever sticky stuff is on the surface. So just it loosens the dirt for you. If there's, if there's a soap uh, component of your product, the surfactant in there is going to lift that dirt to the surface. You're so science -y. Yes, I'm getting science -y here because nerd. this is important. Thank you. Just if it's an out on let me let me supplies. let me go more nerdy. If it's an enzyme, then the cleaning enzyme is going to start breaking down whatever. It is that you have to try and clean it. Literally digests it for you. It like eats it, it. eats it. Like if someone gave you a pizza and was like, you got to eat it in 30 seconds, you wouldn't be able to do that. You need like three minutes, five I, minutes. I need a few minutes. Right? You're right. Okay. If so you're disinfected, I you just can't go. And That's so brilliant. So your cleaners are literally eating the dirt yeah. and you got to give them time to finish their meal. And you're disinfectant. I mean, if, if you want to get really micro about it, like a disinfectant's job, you spray it on the surface, the disinfectant product has to go. It then has to like rip apart the envelope of the cell. We all know about that because of COVID, please and thanks, right? It's got to expose it to air. That doesn't happen. You know, time. like that, it takes a few takes minutes. Time. So that's why when you read the product label and it tells you how long the product needs to sit for and you follow those product instructions, you will be absolutely masterful and you will be lazy. Yes. Okay, so we're le using less product and leaving it on longer. Yes. Like, she's so good. She's like a, the more you know. <laughs> like a scientist <laughs> over here. I'm excited 
to clean my house. I'm not. I'm lying. Did I just make you excited to clean I your house? I'm more excited than I was before I started chatting with okay. you about cleaning the house because we have to do it, man. And that why feels successful to me. We just, let's do it right. If we got to do it, let's do it right. Stop wasting money and time and effort that we don't have to. Yeah. And only do it once. Do it once. A week. A month. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much. I hope you loved these huge cleaning mistakes and that you've learned something. I've learned something. She's a legit scientific genius and I'm feeling inspired to clean. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you head over to Melissa Maker and learn all her amazing tricks. I'm going to put the link to her down below and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. Working with Melissa was awesome and her husband Chad, I forgot how fun it is to do like old school YouTube collabs. We used to call them collabs like collaborations where you got together with another YouTuber and you made a video together and so this was fun. Now Melissa lives about three and a half hours from me so I got to do that in person but I think I want to do collabs with other YouTubers too. Either helping them organize their space or I don't know just do an old school collab with them. So I would love to know in the comments below a YouTuber that you think I could do a collab with and I'll reach out to them. And also just let me know your favorite YouTubers. I love like learning about new channels that I didn't know about and meeting new people who are also doing content creation. So let me know in the comments below who you think it would be cool to do a surprise makeover for maybe on YouTube or just hang out with them and make a video together. I appreciate your help and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.